In this video, we will look at how can we use Excel to calculate our prediction interval and the confidence interval for y. So in order to remind you how can you get the result, and I will repeat the regression analysis again. So first, find the data tab, and under the data tab, choose data analysis. And once you choose the data analysis, you will see this window called the data analysis window and find regression and click OK. Now you will choose your Y range. Y range in our equation is about the new visitors and the X, we have X1 is add column inches and X2 is discount amount. So let's first select our Y range from B1 to B9 and click icon and then we choose the X range from C1 to D9 and since we include the first row which is label so don't forget to choose the labels so if your first row when you do the selection not the, the not our labels please don't check the label then we put put our worksheet in a new worksheet like let's name it as regression then check residual residual plot line fit plot standardized residual and normal property plot so those five box you need to check it because we will use the uh, graph generated by those five um, command to do the diagnostic at the end of this chapter so after you check all five boxes and then you click OK. So now we got our output. So you should be very familiar with this output now. So what we were doing here is we will use the, this Excel output to calculate our regression, uh, calculate our point estimate, which is our Y hat. And based on point estimate, we will calculate the confidence interval and prediction interval. So before I keep, before I move on, and I want to remind you the output of our from our Excel. So the first part, so this part, is called regression statistics. We use the R square, 0.7164, to uh, interpret the goodness of our feet. So R square is the coefficient of determination. And under it, adjusted R square is the adjusted coefficient of determination. So it usually is smaller than R square because the adjusted R square will consider the number of x. And under it, it's a standard arrow. It's our SE. And uh, it's a very important cell. Please mark it. So we will use this number to calculate a prediction interval and a confidence interval. So the observation is the size of the sample, the sample size. So we here have eight observations. And uh, the second part of Excel output called ANOVA table. We can find SSR, SSR, SSE, SS residual and SST and we have F statistic and the significance of F is the p-value for F so we use this value to do our global F tests and the third part of our Excel output is called regression equation estimated regression equation so from this table based on the coefficient we can write down our formula the regre estimated regression equation so the y hat equal to 10.687 plus 2.1569 times x1 plus 0 0.0415 times x2. So the coefficient is the partial coefficient in our regression equation. Based on that, we can uh, construct our regression model. And the t statistic and the p-value is the um, statistic we will use to do the t test t t tests to test the significance of individual x and the lower 90% and the upper 
is the confidence interval for partial coefficient. And we also use this value to do the significance test. So in this video, we will look at how can we calculate our prediction interval and the confidence interval. So let's go back to look at our questions. So we look at the question is, uh, is we given the x1 equal to 5 and uh, x2 equal to 75. We first need to calculate the point, point estimate, which means we want to know how many new customers should we have if we have five inches column and offer them $75 as discount. So in order to do that, we first need to recognize our model. So the y hat, we want to see how what y hat equal to. So we know that x1 is equal to five, x2 equal to 75. Because based on the question, x1 is the uh, advertis uh, advertisement size is 5 inches. And uh, the x2 is discount amount is $75. Then we will calculate our y hat. How can we get our y hat? So actually the y hat is equal to b0. Try to think about how our regression model looks like. The y hat equal to b0 plus b1, 2.Y569, times our x1 plus b2, 0 0.0415 times x2, 75. So instead of typing the number, we are um, choosing the sales because the number are located in each individual unique cell. So we can just select our cells instead of typing the number. After you choose all those cells based on your estimated regression equation, and you can push enter on the keyboard. So we got exactly the same number as we saw on the slides, 24.624 new customers. So we got 24. 4.589 a little bit different but it's very close because the decimal places we keep all the decimal places on itself however on the slides we only keep two three decimal places so the answer should be a little bit uh, different be, um, depends on the, how accurate our number is so we got y hat now let's look at our formula for first look at our formula for the confidence interval so after we got y hat, and we need to look at the two spread, two uh, dispersion for the um, for the boundaries. So one is t times minus t times s e divided by uh, square root of n. Another is t statics times standard error divided by square root of n. So the first thing we need to know what is the value for t statistics. So the t statistics. actually is equal to t inverse. So here I want to mention, if you are using the 2010 or older version of Excel, and if you type in t inverse, you have no notice. But if you are using the 2013, you need to make sure you write really type in t inverse instead of t dot inverse. After you type in t inverse, you should see this notice called this function is available for compatible compatibility with Excel 2007 and earlier returns the two tail inverse of the t-stat student t distribution. We here we are looking for the two tail inverse of the t students t distribution. So don't put dot in the middle between t and inverse. If you put dot t dot inverse, you to and uh, you need to change the entrance for this function. After you type in t inverse parentheses, and the probability is the value for alpha, the co uh, confidence coefficient. So we are using uh, 0.05. So again, if you are using t dot inverse, you should type in 0.025. I will show you later. And the common. 
Then the degree freedom, the same place as I mentioned in simple linear regression model. The degree freedom is the degree freedom for the residual. So you can choose five and close the parentheses. And we got 2.570. So if you go back to look at our slides, and we got exactly the same uh, number. Two point five seven one. So we keep three decimals there. So now I want to show you if you are using another function called uh, t dot inverse. If you are using this formula, you should type in point zero two five common, and degree freedom still choose the degree freedom for residual and close the parentheses. And you got the negative two point five uh two point five seven and what you need to do here is we want to get the positive value so no matter what you have here make sure you choose the positive value in this case scenario because it always looking for the lower boundaries so that's the, um, how you use different functions so again we still use t inverse here so the next, after this, we will go back to look at our formula. So we will use standard arrow divided by the square root of n. So where is the standard arrow? So here is a standard arrow. I asked you to highlight it at the beginning. So 3.3749 is our standard arrow. So our SE is equal to this cell, 3.737. So we just copy the thing. Then the square root of n. So you always can find the value for n on observation. That's why I asked you to highlight it. And how can you get a square root? You, by typing equal SQRT. SQRT stands for square root and parentheses and choose the number 8, close the parentheses, push enter on the keyboard, and then you got square root of n. So now you can have the upper boundary and the lower boundary for the uh, confidence interval for the mean of y. So the lower, the lower band actually equal to y minus T statistic times standard arrow divided by square root of n and we got 21.5225 and upper band is equal to y hat plus t statistics times standard arrow divided by square root of n. So now using the lab, uh, the Excel, we calculated the uh, confidence interval. So this is the confidence interval. So how about the prediction interval? Again, we also have the upper and the lower boundary. As now we need to go back to look at our equation again. How the prediction interval looks like. Actually, it's easier. It's y hat plus minus t statistic times the standard arrow. So the difference between the confidence interval and prediction interval boundary is whether we need to divide by square root of n. So prediction interval, we don't divide by square root of n. So it, this makes its life easier. So you have e call y hat minus t statistics times standard arrow, then you can push enter. So this is the lower boundary, and upper boundary is equal y hat plus t statistics times standard arrow. Then we got a 33.265. So this is our prediction interval for the individual y. So you can find, obviously, the multiple regression model have an easy way to get the lower band, the confidence interval and prediction interval because we have a relatively easier formula.